8 series looking pretty good. Got some new wheels on it. Shop's a little bit of a mess. But man, do I love my job. So I'm a huge fan of AMG and this GTR is just ferocious. If I saw that front end in my mirror, I would immediately move over. This isn't really a garage queen because the owner actually used this car during the winter. I worked on this car back in February. Anyway, I wouldn't mind if all snow plows looked like this. It's here for a wash and wheels off service. The whole car is wrapped in PPF and generally well cared for. The interior is fine, basically just needs a vacuum, wipe down, touch up the windows, that sort of thing. This is not a stock GTR. 760 to the wheels with catless downpipes for all your car nerds out there. Some people have lifts, some people have floor jacks, I have what's called quick jacks. These are great, but you are not going to be performing pit lane tire changes with this. You still have to set it up every time, but they are pretty handy. I thought this was pretty cool. It looks like it's making a pit stop at Cleanworks. I like what I do because I have the opportunity to look at the engineering behind a car like this. Now that it's lifted, I'll focus on detailing the undercarriage. It's not hammered by any means. It's just the fact that a car like this was exposed to things like slush, salt, mud, and you'll see later in the video, lots of gravel road driving. I'm using a foam cannon with some all-purpose cleaner and letting it dwell. The foam stays on the surface longer, allowing the product to break down the dirt, plus intricate areas like brakes, suspension, and so on. The product and water will go where your hands and tools can't. Just make sure you're being mindful if you're planning to do something like this. Less is more. It just looks like a lot because of the foam. You can use an undercarriage attachment to rinse, which I do have, but it is currently broken, so I'm using what I have available. Let it soak, rinse, and come back for the contact wash. And check this out. This has carpeted wheel well liners, and these types of liners hold so much dirt, you have to spend some time rinsing these out. It just keeps coming. contact wash I'm using a variety of brushes and tools to clean the suspension components calipers and wheel wells a wheels off service allows me to clean more things thus improving the overall result any car can benefit from a wheels off service it doesn't matter what it is there's a reason why they put this type of liner on cars but you can be flushing one of these for what seems like an eternity
giving this GTR what I consider a standard Cleanworks maintenance wash. Click on the top right corner to see a how-to on this process. Nothing new here, so just enjoy the views. So right about here, my phone died and it stopped recording. Anyway, back to the video. With the wheels off of the car, they're much easier to clean. I'm personally using PNS Knockoff as a wheel cleaner, which I highly recommend, but I'm still going to use a dedicated iron remover to decontaminate these wheels prior to coating them. It's day two of the AMG GTR detail and today we're going to be focusing on the actual detailing part rather than the cleaning part. Don't get those two things confused. There's a big difference. You spend a lot more time on the actual detailing side of things rather than cleaning it. So today we're actually going to go around the entire car and we're going to remove any sort of rocks and kind of bugs and just stuff that gets all up in the grills right here. So we're not actually going to be doing anything too special with the exterior of this car. What we're actually going to be doing is just getting it nice and clean, which we already did. And we're going to protect it. We're going to clean up the interior. The owner was more concerned with getting the undercarriage clean and the wheels being coated. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to actually detail the exterior. We're going to apply some protection, do a interior detail and we're gonna coat the wheels and the calipers. Oh, and one more thing, we're actually gonna be putting these V8 by Turbo badges on the fenders because for some reason they're not on there and the owner has these and asked me to put them on. I'm gonna take you guys in a little bit closer so you can see exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to the rock scenario. 
Um, this is what happens when you have a car where the trim or the body panels, there's just a lot of it. So there's a lot of edges and there's a lot of things that can get caught in those edges. Also, I'll be showing you guys how to remove those kinds of things using some generic tools and also a little set that I came across. So this is the kind of stuff that I was talking about. As you guys can see right here, the box got caught in the edge of the plastic trim and the bumper, so we gotta get those out, as well as these massive grills right here. I don't even need to shine my light. You guys can see that there's a bunch of rocks, there's a bunch of bugs stuck in the grills and things and whatnot. And these brake cooling ducts or vents or whatever they are, you can't see it, but where my finger's pointing, there's some rocks caught up in the edge over there. Same thing on the other side right here. And this is where the badges go, if you guys are not familiar. They go right here, something along the lines like that. The rear has a similar thing going on as far as the rocks go, because as far as this rear diffuser goes, a lot of things get caught up underneath it as well. As you guys can see, there's rocks caught up in that edge, so we gotta remove that as well as just detail these vents and things like that because as you guys saw, they, they're not completely clean. So we're just trying to get everything nice and shiny. And we're actually gonna be polishing out this center exhaust tip as well because I thought this was just a black exhaust tip. It's not. It's just so caked, it just needs to be polished out. As you guys can see, it's supposed to be silver. Also, what I didn't know about this car I thought it just had a center exhaust, but it actually has a quad exhaust. So that's an exhaust, that's an exhaust, and right there, there's an exhaust as well. So we're gonna start with the front and move our way around the car. In order to get the stuff out of these vents right here, I'm gonna be using a combination of things. Pressed air, pick tools, tweezers, and also, this is what's called a vacuum micro cleaning kit. This is the adapter that goes. These are the different bits. You just hook this up to your vacuum. You put whatever tip you want on it and you could get into all the nooks and crannies. So we're gonna try that out. So I actually bought this micro cleaning kit a long time ago, but I've never used it. And this is the first scenario that I'll actually try it out. So we'll see if it's any good. The owner tells me that this car sees a lot of gravel roads and combine that with Midwestern winter, you can see why it's here getting detailed. On the outside, it doesn't look too bad, but trust me when I say there were pebbles in every single crevice, ledge, nook, and cranny. Doing this seems ridiculous, but in this specific case, there's bugs and leaves on the coolers, which you can argue hinder performance, and the pebbles are actually pushing away at the panels in some spots because they're stuck in that meeting edge. surgery don't mind me just taking apart a two hundred thousand dollar car With the lower portion of the diffuser off, I'm using a rinseless wash and a towel to get that area clean. Wipe in one direction, clean all the pieces, and reinstall your parts. Alright, it's time to put the badges on. So first thing we're going to do is clean the area with some alcohol. Make sure that we have a good surface to bond to. I already did the other side and let me tell you, it was the most stressful thing that I've ever done. So time to do it again. So some people do templates. I don't have a template. I basically only just have this and a tape measure. I 
can breathe. Fronts are good, they just need to be wiped down and they'll be good to go. But the rears have this staining going on. But this looks like to me is Cosmoline, which is the undercoating stuff that they put all over the car, up underneath the car and all the suspension pieces so it doesn't rust. It's a rust inhibitor. But I assume that it was still fresh when they went to go and drive it from the factory, whether it was on the truck or whatever, it doesn't really matter. And it probably splattered all over the inner barrel. So we have to remove that before we can actually coat those. To remove the Cosmoline, I'm using adhesive remover, a throwaway towel, and a plastic razor if I need to. I'm a pro, so I know what I'm doing, but you always want to start with the least aggressive method first. I worked my way up to this combo. Start with isopropyl alcohol and a towel and go from there. After that's completed, a final prep wipe and these can get coated. Black wheels are easy to ceramic coat because you can see the difference easily and it's much easier to catch spots that you may have missed. I usually spray the coating on the calipers, but these aren't that intricate and they're pretty large. So I didn't feel like I needed to set all that up for this specific task. So it's time to finalize this GTR detail and to do that, we're gonna be applying some protection to the surface of this car. Now, again, this car has a full PPF install on it, but in case you guys didn't know, you can use pretty much anything you want on PPF. The only thing that I wouldn't recommend using on PPF is an traditional paste wax, just because it's gonna get caught in the edges and it's gonna look like crap. This case, I am going to be using Griot's Garage Ceramic Speed Shine. So we're just gonna go ahead and apply it. We're gonna do the windows and then we're finished. Look, so the weather was pretty wacky on the day that I filmed these results, which is why you'll see the car in different spots and lighting. This GTR is super cool. I bet this thing just eats miles on the highway. It looks like it's going 200 miles an hour just standing still. Running a business and life interfere with filming and editing, and I do want each video to be better and better. Show your support and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and hit that like button if you'd want one of these in your garage. Working on this car was a pleasure. It sounds mean, looks mean, and it's clean. Comment below what you would like to see next. I hope you're excited for the upcoming content, but in the meantime, stay clean.
picked up all the dirt and the rocks that were in that car. Doesn't look too bad, but that shouldn't be in there to begin with. Thank you.